Okay, to continue, we're going to compute, then we're going to compute for the elevation of PVT, and this will be equal to the elevation of PVI, then plus the half of the total length of the curve, which is 0.5 of L times the final grade is of 2. So this will give us 420 plus 0 0.5 times 13.466 times 1.0 so this gives us 426.73 feet so therefore the station of pvt is equal to 110 plus 00, 0 plus 13 plus 46.6 all over 2 so this will give us 116 plus 73.3 so therefore we can compute now for our x so that is the distance actually of the point uh, of interest having a station of 112 plus 0, 0 of the curve so therefore x has an equation of a while ago 0.5 of l plus 2.0 so you will have here 0.5 of, 0.5 of l so meaning to say half of 13.46 for so it gives us 6.73 plus 2.0 so we have 8.733 stations this is from pvc so therefore we're going to check whether the elevation at the of the curve at station 112 plus 00, 0 with x equal to 8.73 is actually equal to 424.5. So we're going to check this one. So to check, we're going to check uh, our elevation y, which is of the curve at station... 112 plus 0, 0 with x equal to 8.733 so using the equation of the parabolic equation y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c so this will give us our a is actually equal to 3 from our equation all over 2 times 13.466 and our x is 8.733 squared then plus our b is negative 2.0 and our uh, x is 8.733 and our c is 433.47 so if we try to simplify our y is 424.5 feet so meaning to say this gives us the value of 124.5 which is actually the elevation that was stated on the problem so meaning to say all our calculations all throughout are correct okay let us move on to some additional properties of the vertical curve so an example to that is the offset when we talk about offset those are vertical lessons from the initial tangent curve from the initial tangent to the curve so for this one we have here our uh, illustration for our offset so we have our crest curve with a tangent line and we have our y which is the distance from the tangent line towards the curve that is now the offset we also have another offset which is y sub m and another offset which is y sub f we have to take note that y is the offset at any distance x on the curve and that is from pvc so any y is the offset the y is the offset at any distance x from pvc and our y sub m is the mid curve offset so it is located uh, on pvi and our y sub f that is the final that is the final or the offset at the end of the curve so our y sub f is the offset at the end of the curve so it is located at pvt so still we have other variables uh, it was already defined earlier a while ago so what are those uh, designation for each of the variable so how do we compute for our offsets so basically to compute for our offset we have our y that is equal actually to a, all over, a times x squared all over 200 times l 
wherein A is absolutely the absolute value uh, of the difference in grades, uh, which is G sub 1 minus G sub 2. And our Y sub M is actually A times L all over 800. L, of course, the length of the curve. And our Y sub F is A times L all over 200. You have to take note that A is always the absolute value of the difference between the initial grade and the final grade. So we still have another property, curve, vertical curve property, which is also important. Uh, the one that gives the length of the curve that is required to affect a 1% change in slope, and that is denoted by K. So our K is actually L all over A. So this is actually K as the value that is a horizontal distance required to affect to affect a 1% change in the slope of the vertical curve. And of course, our L is the length of the curve, our A is the absolute value in the difference in grades G sub 1 and G sub 2. And the, this K value can also be used to compute the high and low point location of crest and sag vertical curves respectively. So basically for this, if we're going to have, if we set our first derivative dy over dx equal to zero, and we try to solve for x, it gives the distance from PVC to the high or low point. And we are going to make use of the, if we try to use, to substitute for a, which is we're in our L is equal to k times a, we can have the equation uh, x of hl, which is equal to k times g sub 1, and our x of hl actually is the distance from PVC to the high or low point uh, in the curve. So meaning to say, if we're going to compute for our high or low point, uh, this, which is at the distance of the high or the low point in the curve, that is the distance from PVC, we make, uh, we're going to make use of this. We can make use of this equation for x of hl, which is k times g sub 1. So that is for the computation of the distance from PVC towards the high or low point in the curve. Okay, we have the first example. A curve has initial and final grades of positive 3% and negative 4% respectively. And that is 700 feet long. So we are given with the initial grade and the final grade and of course the length of the curve which has 700 feet long. The PVC is at elevation 100 feet. Graph the vertical curve elevations and the slope of the curve against the length of the curve. So compute the K value and use it to locate the high point of the curve. So for this, that is the distance from the PVC. So to start with our solution, we have to compute first for... Uh, we have to take note that in our previous discussion, we're able to find the slope at any point on the curve, and we have to take the derivative of that. And in that equation, we have our coefficients, which are a and b. So we are given with our uh, equation for our a, which has g sub 2 minus g sub 1 all over 2 times l. So actually, this one is... Uh, g sub 2 minus g sub 1 all over 2L. So if we try to substitute, you have now the value which is negative point, point 0.5. And our B, of course, is equivalent to our g sub 1, and that is equal to 3 based on the given values. So now we're going to graph this one. We have to graph, we're given with the length, which is 700 feet long. And of course, with the grade, which has 3% and negative 4% for the initial and final grade, respectively. So, so that we could have our uh, graph, for us to have the graph, we are going to have the, we're going to show whether our K is, uh, we're going to show that whether, because we have here that the circular points on the slope of the curve line which correspond to changes in grade of 1%, and this point occurs at equal interval of 100 feet. So there is an interval of 100 feet. So we are going to show that this is consistent with the value for k. So our k is actually equal to L all over A. And that is 700 all over the absolute difference in G1 minus G sub 2. So it gives us 100. So that is consistent. The interval is consistent with the value for k. So if we try to graph that one, 
if we're going to graph our given values, so we have here our uh, our graph, our x here is the distance from PVC. So that is, of course, the length of the curve is 700 feet. So meaning to say that is 0 to 700. And our y here represents the curve elevation. And of course, we also have on our lower y, we have our slope of the curve. So we just graph in one uh, the curve elevation versus the distance and the slope of the curve versus the distance however you can also have a separate for this but this one you simply have a in one graph there is now the uh, illustration for the curve elevation and the slope of the curve with respect to the distance from pvc so for this one uh, if we want to have the curve elevation, uh, so basically this is this is our PVC at point zero. So this is our PVT at uh, seven hundred feet from PVC. So based on our elevation at PVC, we are given with a curve elevation of one hundred. So we're given with our curve elevation, which is one hundred feet. So we have here one hundred feet. So basically, how to get this one? We're going to have our elevation at PVI. So basically, if we're going to have the elevation at PVI, so elevation at P of PVI, so basically that would be the elevation at PVC, which has 100, then plus, that will be plus the initial grade, which is 3, multiplied to the half of the length of the curve, which is 3.5 station. So you have to take note, this is 3.5 station. This is 350 uh, feet or 3.5 station. And this will give us the value for uh, this one. If we try to have uh, 3.5 times our 3 plus our 100. So it gives us 110 actually, 110.5 that will be the elevation of PVI. So therefore, the elevation of PVT will be equivalent to 110.5. Then you subtract the elevation, the grade, the initial grade at PV at the in final grade, which is neg which is four, then times uh, 3.5. So that will be equivalent to ninety six point five. So the result here is ninety six point five. So therefore, if you're going to observe, we have here the elevation. So this is the elevation. This is approximately ninety six point five. So we have drawn now. Then to try to connect. So you have now your curve elevation graph for the slope of the curve we simply have since this is 700 in the distances or 700 the distance is 700 feet so there is an interval it comes to so this one is a one percent grade changes of one percent so that in in every change of slope which is one percent for every 100 uh, feet interval so for every 100 feet interval so you have a one percent change in slope so this is so if we're going to observe so you have uh, three so that will be that's the one that corresponds to that so there's an interval of one uh, percent and at an for the slope and there's an interval for 100 feet for the distance so then i try to connect you have now the graph for the slope of the curve with respect to the distance.